The Bible talks about what religion could look like, what it should not look like, and what true religion is. We'll find out in this episode of Inverse. Bible describes there are the outward components of us and then the inward components of us and sometimes there are interesting dynamics between those two. My name is Justin Kim and you're on Inverse and in the studio we have Jonathan Israel and Siku and we're in the book of James. I want to encourage you to go to inversebible.org and download our Bible study guide and we have got books, we got the apps, we got the websites, we got the social media, we got the whole shebang there. Go there and visit and spend a lot of time there and then also watch us while you're there. So, hey guys, what's going on? Hey. Good to see we you. are in the book of James, chapter, we're still in chapter one, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, but we're taking it verse by verse and we're looking at different aspects of trial and temptation and some of these wonderful, happy things that we have in our lives. Um, we're going to go to chapter 1, verse 19 to, to 27, and Siku, if you can pray for us before we okay. read Scripture. Sure. Let us pray. Loving Father, we're thankful for the study of your Word. We're thankful especially for the gift of the Holy Spirit who can illumine our minds and help us to understand what we read. Mm -hmm. And we ask for your Spirit now to be our teacher. Help us not to say anything that is contrary to what you intend from Scripture. And may we be um, blessed as we study your Word right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, Israel, read, can you read from verse 19 onwards? Yes. It says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive the meekness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets, forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, and continues in it, and is not, for, is, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in all that he does. If anyone among you thinks that he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, sorry, and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Mm -hmm. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the orphans and the widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Yeah, we were really looking at uh, the book of James and how it's so well adapted for this generation. Very practical, very real, um, talks about the same injustices that are going on today, some of the disconnections that are, that are happening today. And here in chapter 1, we've covered a lot of stuff already. Jonathan, what are some highlights that you remember mm -hmm. from chapter 1? Uh, I think uh, chapter 1 covers a lot of ground already. Yep. And, and James really uh, points out various uh, situations that the church was struggling with. And he talks about the rich and the poor, you know, uh, kind of like, and, and that's a that's a topic that's going to come up again in the book. Yeah, will. Uh, how do we treat the rich? How do we treat the poor? What does that teach us about ourselves? Um, but then also talking about trials and temptations. What's the difference between trials and temptations? How does God, you know, uh, uh, play into all this? How does Satan play into all of this? And we saw that, you know, trials um, is something that God sends for the purpose of showing us what is in our hearts and for giving us a deepening relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. At the same time. Satan takes the opportunity to bring in temptations, and those temptations, uh, they resonate with some of our, you know, sinful desires that, if left unchecked, lead us to sin and death. Mm -hmm. But by God's grace, of course, there is a remedy and help to be able to resist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love that uh, synopsis there. Um, continuing, and it picks up after what Jonathan just said in verse 19. Mm -hmm. So then, my beloved brethren, let everyone, every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Um, help connect me on that. It, it, it's not, it, it's not, uh, doesn't kind of make sense in a sense. <laughs> in a sense, in a sense. Uh, so, hey, overcome temptation, sin, you know, conception, all that stuff. So, the conclusion is, uh, be slow, be, be slow yeah. to, to, to wrath. 
How, how is that the conclusion? I don't understand. Well, if, if you keep on reading, it says, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Okay. And so if you, if you, the whole point that he's been making is, yeah. from the very beginning is, yeah. our need to be righteous like God. Okay. You know, in God, there's no variableness of turning, okay. right? Every perfect gift is from him. And so because in God, there is no variableness of turning, then you yourself should not be variable. You should not be wishy-washy, tossed by the waves of the sea, right? So his whole, the, whole con the whole point where he's leading us towards is this path towards what it means to be like Christ, godliness, okay. which is real religion. And so he's saying, this is the ultimate goal. And by the way, you cannot obtain this ultimate goal if you are not mm -hmm. slow to speak and slow to wrath. Mm -hmm. Because if you are these things, by the way, it's, th these are... These are impossible roadblocks towards righteousness, the righteousness of God. Okay. And so that's, I think, now the, the foundation that he's laying. Ultimately, we're going towards godliness. You cannot obtain godliness if you are not slow to wrath. God is patient, right? And then the trial of your patience, work, you know, the trial of your faith works patience. Mm. So there's all these connections that you can actually see between who God is and who we ought to become if we're going to be like him. So I guess it is a temptation that in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your temptation, to react with wrath mm -hmm. and react with impatience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right? to just, to just to like basically to just go with your emotions and, 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 and instead of listening and, and learning from God and gaining self-control through the mm -hmm. spirit uh, of, of how you react to whatever mm -hmm. comes your way. Mm -hmm. And um, so something that I thought of with the not being swift to hear, so we should be swift to hear, so we should take counsel, we should take mm -hmm. advice quickly, um, but then being slow to speak, and I, I wasn't on the first episode, but you know, where it talks about let patience have its perfect work in verse yeah. four, mm. yeah. um, that when God is bringing us tr through trials, it's because he's trying to work out patience in us. Mm -hmm. He's teaching us how to be patient. It doesn't come naturally to us. And um, patience, the, the virtue of patience is it allows you the time to like to reflect mm -hmm. and produce, you know, the words that are going to be actually beneficial in a situation, the reaction that's going to be helpful. Um, but if we're quick to speak, um, even the trials that God is trying to work out in our lives, um, even the temptations that we experience, we don't get to benefit from what God is trying to do in us before we react, mm -hmm. right? Um, so like, like what you're saying, you're going through mm -hmm. a, a trial or a temptation and you know, you're angry, you get angry real quick, or you're like, you're, you're quick to um, put a person in their right place, you mm -hmm. know, et cetera. And then God doesn't get to work out the character development that he's trying to do in your mm -hmm. life um, to make you righteous like him mm -hmm. because you're so quick to respond. Yeah. Yeah. And he's saying, so be, Take it easy, chill. God is doing something in you. God is doing something in your life, and then He's going to work out something in you. Uh, I would say, like, in a lot of uh, uh, James, also, it's like you should do this, and then do this, and then this. And sometimes it's almost like, ah, oh, this is like, uh, it's almost like the Ten Commandments, like mm -hmm. do this, do this, do this. But we all know that the overlay on the Book of James mm -hmm. is whatever the, the Scripture tells us to do. They are, these are also promises that God has worked yeah. throughout. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, uh, this this verse and and, and same same. Uh, uh, well, my children, my sons have a wonderful ability to tease out the wrath of their father. Right? They yeah. just love to do that. And so I remember one time there was an instance where I was not the best father that I should be, and I just, you know, it was wrath, you know, multiplied by two, and then squared, and then cubed after that. <laughs> and then I come back, and I was like, okay, well now it's time for my devotions, right? <laughs> and I remember reading this verse, <laughs> I and. And, and I got angry. I got angry at James. I got angry at God. I'm like, you, do, you, you don't understand the circumstance. Da, 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 da. And then the whole thing was like, look, how can you tell me to be this way mm -hmm. when I'm not that way? I, I uh. can't. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna, and, and so very sarcastic. I'm going to listen. You know, I'm going to not talk. But this is, this is not talking on that level one at all. Mm -hmm. right? this is on, this, uh, James is talking on level five here that God develops in us mm -hmm. through the trial, through the temptation. Is and I think, I think maybe the, as you were speaking here, the shift in our thinking is critical. He's not speaking to two-year-olds. He's mm. speaking to, he's, yeah. not, he's not giving commands, he's giving reasons. Mm. He's speaking mm. to us as reasonable individuals. Mm. He's not saying, hey, oh, no, 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 don't mm -hmm. be, tone it down, listen, I'm gonna pull your ear if you're not <laughs> listening, right? He's not saying that. As, what he's saying is, if you want to accomplish this, mm -hmm. you need a logical path forward. Mm -hmm. You need a reasonable path forward. Mm -hmm. And that reasonable path forward is for you to shift the way you think and to start thinking and processing the way that heaven processes. Mm -hmm. And if your goal is godliness, if your goal is real religion, true religion, mm -hmm. then what you need to do is you need to 
be very, very quick to listen. This is a skill mm -hmm. that is necessary to develop. And you need to be very slow to speak and very mm -hmm. slow to anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say even quick to listen to the, to the, lo to the Lord, the Lord. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To the Lord, to the movings of the Spirit and, and, and seeing how the Lord. Goes. You know, and, and it doesn't end there. He continues if you go to verse 21. Yes, please, please, please. He says, therefore, lay aside, you know, not just the slowness of, uh, or the quick anger, but he says, all filthiness mm -hmm. and overflow of wickedness. So everything, you know, like, it, it, he, he's, it's not just being quick in wrath. Mm -hmm. Lay it all aside and then it continues, and receive with meekness mm -hmm. the implanted word which is able to save your soul. So right there, we see, I mean, this is a powerful verse uh, showing us the way towards righteousness is through the implanted word. What does that mean? That is, of course, the word of God, which comes with creative power, His promises enabling us for righteousness, but it has to be implanted. That means God has to put it into our hearts, into our lives. We cannot do this ourselves. It says, receive it with meekness. Mm -hmm. That means I accept a gift that comes from Him with an attitude of meekness, which means uh, we acknowledge that we need it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so He implants it, and when you plant a seed, something takes place, something grows, and it becomes strong, you know, a, a tree or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so the Word of God has the power to transform our lives from the inside out, um, and give, you know, and lead us towards that righteousness that he, you know, he's producing in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love, I love the focus that, uh, as as John was reading here, the focus here is on yourself as opposed to others. You know, mm. uh, when you were telling a story about your boys, it was funny because I was thinking about sharing a, sim a very similar story. You know, and it's like you're going through, when you're going specifically for me. If there's something around the house that needs to get done, or or like you know, win the, like winter's coming in in Michigan, and so everything needs to be changed around the house. We need to start getting ready for the wood and all that stuff to heat the house. And then all of a sudden, things that stress at work, you come and you're thinking to yourself, why is the world not aware of the fact that I'm under an incredible amount of stress? You know? <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and you're focusing, instead of focusing on, your, oh. on, on yourself, like my need to grow, it's like you need to not do that so, so that, that I can I grow. Can grow. Mm. You know? And he's <laughs> focusing, but he doesn't do that. He focuses on himself. He's like, yeah. you need to lay aside. It is our responsibility to lay aside our, our filthiness. It is our responsibility to lay aside our, weak, our, our wickedness. It's not your responsibility to do it for me. It's my responsibility to do it for myself. Mm. I was going to say it's, it's time for you to take a break, but it's time for us to take a break. <laughs> and so stay with us. We're going to continue talking about James chapter 1. Welcome back. We are talking about uh, the anatomy of temptation, how it leads into the implanting of the Word. These are all dynamics that we find in the first chapter of the book of James. Now we're going to go into doing and not only hearing. Let's mm. go to verse 22 of James chapter 1. And, oh, oh Siku. Yeah. We're going to come back to Siku. <laughs> Sorry. Before, before the doing. Yes, before um, the doing. Just, just piggybacking on, on Israel's comment on verse 21. Okay, verse 21. Where it talks yep. about, because uh, he was talking about our responsibility to lay aside our filthiness, our responsibility to lay aside the overflow of wickedness. Yes. Um, but it's interesting the, the, the way that it's phrased here and says, and receive with mm -hmm. meekness. Mm -hmm. So there's something that God is trying to give to us mm. that we cannot receive unless we put aside something else. Mm. Um, so it's kind of like, you you know, um, in order to receive this thing that is good, I need to let go of this thing that is bad. Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Right, and, and not that. letting go of these things prohibits me from being able to receive what God is trying to give mm. to me. Mm -hmm. And then it says, when we receive, what we're receiving is the implanted word, and what that word works out in us is the salvation also. It is able to save our mm. souls. Mm -hmm. But then I guess, then it goes on to like, just because you heard it doesn't mean that it will save yeah. your souls, but it has the ability to do that. And if you lay aside all these other things, then you yeah. have the ability to receive that thing which could save your soul. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I really see in verse 21, this is really uh, the power of choice, the power of mm -hmm. will. Uh, it's not the actual, the, we're not, we haven't gotten to the point of doing yet, right. but hey, are you going to receive but if you receive, you have to let go. Oh, I love that. You have to let go mm -hmm. and uh, laying aside. And there's a, there's a choice, a yeah. not the actual action and the doing and the obedience. That's, mm -hmm. that's that comes a little bit later. And 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 it's not. I, I think it's important for us to stress this too, Justin. That it's not. We're not dealing with my responsibility to save myself, mm -hmm. right? right? Yep. But what we are dealing with is making sure that I take responsibility about my Christian life mm -hmm. and not your responsibility to save mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. which is the human tendency is that we, we other people are responsible for my salvation. Mm -hmm. So if you're a hypocrite, then 
I don't mind not going to heaven, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're this, then I'm not going to be a Christian. Or if, if, if you mistreat me, I'm going to just be angry and ruin my life. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the focus on self is not the focus on self at the expense of God, mm -hmm. but it's the focus on self instead of the focus on others. Yes. Mm. So we really appreciate that comment. We want you to focus on, on yourself, but if, <clears throat> if you see this episode and you want to recommend this to other people that you may be thinking of, share this episode on social media and, and, and forward it over to your friends, and it's a great way to, to do not what Israel said to do. Okay, let's go to verse, 20, <laughs> verse 22. We're going to move on to verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only mm. deceiving yourselves. And it talks about hearing and doing, hearing and doing, and in a mirror here. Um, describe, exp explain this and parse this experience out. Mm. He is talking about an experience here with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So the Word's been implanted, mm -hmm. but now what happens afterwards? Jonathan yeah. and then Seeker. You know, uh, we live in a time now where it's amazing how much information you can get for free. You can get, I mean, Harvard classes, watch it for free. You can get all this stuff. Uh, uh, when it comes to the religious world, you know, there's Audioverse and many other places where you can just get <laughs> sermons after sermons and all this amazing, really great information uh, or audiobooks. You know, I love audiobooks. I listen to this stuff and I'm always like, wow, okay, you know, these books promise you so many changes that can happen if you do this and this and this. But then the audiobook is over and then, like, okay, now you got to do it. But then, oh, look at this audiobook. Oh, look at this sermon. And so it's possible to receive and receive and receive, but it does nothing to you. Yeah. No change takes place. Yeah. And that's really, I think, part of the human condition uh, that without God's help, there will be no change. Mm -hmm. uh, we want change. We all desire it. I think every human being wants change. This is why movies and social media work so well, because we all desire what we see there. Mm -hmm. But the, the point of getting to where I'm actually doing that um, is that's the great challenge. And this is where, you know, of course, God's grace comes in and helps us. Mm -hmm. But here we see that uh, James is pointing out the issue of, you know, you hear the word, we have to become doers as well. Uh, otherwise, you're deceiving yourself. Mm. And that is where I think the, the danger lies because when you, uh, you might hear a sermon, okay, and the preacher talks about something, you're like, amen, you know, you, you, you agree with it, you, you, you praise it. You might even share the sermon, you know, you might, you, you might share this episode of Inverse because it's so powerful <laughs> and it really, it, you know, speaks to your heart and something you, you really believe in, right? But um, that will, is all great by itself, but it's not enough for it to change your life. Uh, you have to become a doer by God's grace as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, it's a challenge, and I guess we're gonna talk, hash it out a little bit more, yeah. how, we, how we overcome that. But that is something that is, is, I think, part of the human condition, really. Yeah, no, I so resonate with that, Jonathan, mm -hmm. when uh, I'm in listening to something, I feel like I'm doing it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I, I remember listening to something on how to be more effective and focused in your work. And as I'm, I'm as I'm listening to the audiobook, I am so effective in my work. I am, <laughs> even though I'm not, I don't lose anything. Mm -hmm. But the minute, yeah, it's so true. Mm -hmm. And and there are many people who have that spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. As they're, as long as they're listening to the speaker that they like, as long as they're watching Inverse, <laughs> uh, you feel like you're in the verse. As long as you're with that spiritual person. Mm -hmm. So how do we bridge? Mm -hmm. Where does that doing take place? Where, how do we activate and, mm -hmm. and, and get into that? Siku. I don't know if I have that answer. Okay. <laughs> All right, no, then I answer the question. I, no, I don't, I don't <laughs> whatever you want. Because I wanted to respond to, to the text like, yeah. the, on, the, mm. on, on this challenge that we have to resonate as well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> in that in a, a lot of times in, in education, in the educational system, like there's, there's so much emphasis on like learning the information and becomes so heady, right? So we hear, you hear, you hear the information, you hear it, and, and, and then, um, but application, mm. like is, is, I guess, the word that you Indeed. use in, in academia. Like how do you apply what it is that yes. you have learned? Yes. And I think that's a challenge that we have. And I, I feel like, um, sorry, <laughs> I know this is Israel's, this is Israel's soapbox, but you know, um, the education is not supposed to teach you just to think, but also to do, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be able to think and to do, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. then, then we have a holistic education, but I think a lot of our educational system trains us just to think, mm -hmm. you know, to think through a problem, to, you know, to problem solve, but then like to actually do. So how does that impact your life? Mm -hmm. You know, how does that impact everybody else? And this is what James is talking about. Like, it's important, be quick to hear, but then if you just hear and then you don't do anything mm. about it, you become what he calls a forgetful hearer, right? Mm -hmm. 
it doesn't impact you. And so 10 years from now, you won't remember that book that you just read teaching mm -hmm. you how to be an effective worker mm -hmm. because you never implemented it. Mm -hmm. But how do you make sure that what it is that I'm hearing is going to be there in 10, 15 years from yeah. now is because I incorporated it into my life. Mm -hmm. Now it's not a theory in a book, but it's who I am, mm -hmm. right? And, and he's saying like, we need to go from just listening to the mm -hmm. word of God to experiencing the Word of God and letting it be part of who we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I've also seen there's, there's uh, some who seem to be damaged by the, I don't know what to call it, but the temptation of practicality, the temptation mm -hmm. of app application. Mm -hmm. So you're like, hey guys, we, we need to be memorizing more of the Bible. And like, well, how do we do that practically? Mm -hmm. We just got to sit down and then read the Bible verse and get into, well, how mm -hmm. do we do that? And they keep asking it. Mm -hmm. And it's often a kind of a cloak for, for, for an ex as an excuse to not to do what you know you should do. Mm -hmm. The application takes time to sit down and to absorb and meditate a, mm -hmm. uh, on a certain thought and be like, how do I, in my context, mm -hmm. not with someone who's preaching to me or me reading a book, but the way that God is leading me and, and God reveals in my context, in this state, in, in my status right now, mm -hmm. how do I do this? Mm -hmm. And that takes time and struggle and it's unclear, yeah. mm -hmm. it's ambiguous, but that relationship, if that's secure, allows it, you ride that relationship yeah. for the application to occur. And I, just at a, at a practical level for myself, like one of the things that um, I've had to implement more, you know, with work, you know, family, et cetera, is someone said years ago, for your personal devotional life, it's more important um, quality than quantity. Mm. It's more important that you read something and it and you absorb it than you read through the entire Bible, like mm. cover to cover over and over and over again. And I've had to implement that more because I have less time to actually like, you know, go s read swats. And so I can listen, you know, like to uh, the Bible audio, but to uh, sit down and study and read. Mm. And so at a practical level every day, like when I have my devotions, it's like, okay, I'm reading this text and it's like, okay, Lord, help me to glean something from this. And before my devotional time is over, I have to have thought of how am I implementing this today mm -hmm. with my children? Mm -hmm. Or what am I gonna do with my husband that's gonna implement what I just read? Or what am I, how am I gonna think differently? How am I gonna act differently? And it has to be like a very practical step that's coming out of what I have just heard, I mm -hmm. guess, from the Word of God. So yeah. like, personally speaking, like just practicalizing it, just really, I want to hear the word, but then I want to implement it. And then when I come back tomorrow, it's not, oh, what did I read again? I don't have to think, what did I read again? Because I spent the entire day mm -hmm. implementing mm -hmm. what it is that I had mm -hmm. read. And then it just becomes a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Peter, uh, not Peter, James seems to say in verse 27, and I love this, pure and undefiled religion. I, I love that even phrase because religion in itself is under attack today. And he says that before God and the Father is, to, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So then some people take that literally and like, as long as I'm visiting the orphans and I'm the widows, then this must be true religion. But this is external manifestations of what God has said internally. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we live in a society where anything externalized that's religious or spiritual is considered, uh, is, hey, no, 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 keep that to yourself. Why you gotta impose mm -hmm. that upon me? Why do you get me up in my space? We are called to be public, uh, outward, ex external Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, how, do we, how, how do we battle some of those dynamics and whatnot? Israel and then John. I think in order to, external religion without internal religion is useless. Mm. I think that's the problem mm. with the world today, right? Mm -hmm. In verse 25, before he gets to verse 27, he gives us the key okay. to the process. It says, mm -hmm. he who looks at the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Mm -hmm. So here, this is what he's saying. He's like, the law of God is not to be a textbook to be studied. We don't, let me understand and learn more of the law. Of, that's not the purpose. The purpose of the law of God is to be a mirror meaning that it's more of a reference point, right? Am I going off track? I need the law of God. Okay, I'm, I, I'm gonna keep on going, okay. And it's like when, when you're learning to drive, if you focus on the, on the lines on the road, if, you, if all you do is look at the line, you're gonna crash in front of you. You're off, yeah. You know, but they're there as a reference. You know, you're driving ahead, look to the side, okay, I'm still in my lane. That's what the law of God is like. So he says, look, focus on the law of God as a reference point, not as a textbook to be studied. Mm -hmm. If you do that, then you're going to continue. You're going to work, continue, work, continue, work, continue. What's going to happen as you do that is you're going to have, which is the key to the, to the process in the Christian experience, it says they will be blessed in what they do. Mm -hmm. In other words, you cannot be undefiled. You cannot be 
uh, laying aside all your filthiness and all that. These are not possibilities outside of the blessing of God. Mm -hmm. You need the blessing of God, and I do, and we obtain the blessing, so as it works. We obtain the blessing of God to overcome ourselves. How do we do that? When we have a desire to move forward and when we use the law of God as a reference point and not as a textbook to be studied. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. John? Well, um, I was just going to say that I think fear keeps a lot of people from, uh, from being, becoming doers of the word. Mm. Fear of you know, not being successful uh, in, in, mm. in, in doing whatever because they compare themselves to others. But I've learned in my life that looking at the gospel, looking at how Jesus values me and what he, you know, how much he loves me, how much he cares and how much he wants to help me, mm -hmm. uh, helps me to shut out all that fear and that anxiety of, okay, how do I do all these things? And oh, everyone does it so much better than me. God wants, has a plan for you, wants to work with you individually. And that's where I, I, I think that fear can be disseminated if, as we look at Christ and, and mm -hmm. His willingness to work with you. Awesome, awesome. Look at Christ, dispel the fear. And as the great Nike company says, just do it. But we would say here at Inverse, just do it by God's grace and power living in your life. We're so happy that you decided to join us, us here at Inverse. Hopefully we'll see you next week as we continue the book, uh, the study on the book of James. God bless you guys. Thank you.